Do you guys remember the SNES Classic Edition? It released on September of 2017, about six months after the release of the Nintendo Switch. At the time, it was highly sought after, especially since in 2017, Nintendo didn't have any way to play any Super Nintendo games on the Switch until they launched a subscription service through NSO a whole two and a half years later. So with the ability to play SNES games on Switch and with the rise of high quality and affordable retro handhelds, why would you want to go on eBay and purchase one of these mini consoles today? Well, honestly, it's just for one big reason, and that's the modding scene. I'm shocked by the sheer amount of work that has gone into the modding scene for the SNES Classic. There's way more that can be played, customized, and tweaked on this little device than I ever expected, from adding a wide variety of games across various platforms, to adding custom themes and boot up screens, and even unique animations, there's a lot to be found here. Today I want to share how far the modding community went with the SNES Classic, and if you still have one of these lying around, I'll provide a quick tutorial right now on how I set everything up if you want to follow along, in addition to providing plenty of resources in the description if you want to go beyond this tutorial, because I'm just going to show you how to add games. If you don't care about the tutorial and you just want to see the actual stuff, then uh, just go ahead to the next chapter. Uh, but for the cool kids, let's, uh, let's start modding. So if you already have a SNES Classic, then you most likely have everything you'll need to mod it. At the bare minimum, if you have the console, a micro USB cable, and a Windows PC, you're good. I should mention that if you're looking to store this guy with every ROM imaginable and make this your all-in-one emulation machine, you're going to need to find a way to put extra storage on this guy. This, by default, only has a whopping 512 megabytes of internal storage, and only 250 of it is actually usable. So for additional storage, I'd recommend something called USB Host. USB Host is a mod that involves connecting a flash drive into a USB adapter, which you can just find online, which then connects directly directly to the back of the console. I won't be covering that in this video since the majority of the games I'm downloading are only a few megabytes each, but if you want more games with larger file sizes like Game Boy Advance, Dreamcast, and N64, I'll provide links to other tutorials in the description. Now, none of this would be possible without a piece of software called Hakshi. You can download it from GitHub, and this is the main program that we'll be using for all of our modding needs. Luckily, the software is so simple and streamlined that setting this all up shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. So download Hakshi and wait for it to download. When you boot up Hakshi for the first time, click on kernel, and then click on install slash repair. This will ask if you want to flash the custom kernel and select yes. Then it'll give you a series of instructions. First, unplug the USB cable from the mini if it's not already unplugged. Next, turn the power switch on. Lastly, hold the reset button as you insert the USB cable into the mini and only let go of the reset button when the light on the front turns on. After that, Hakshi will install in your system and when that's done, it's modded. Okay, so that's it, it's already modded, but uh, well, now we need to get some games on this sucker. And luckily, doing that is really simple. For SNES games, you can literally just take your ROMs and drag them straight into Hakshi. Hakshi will automatically start processing the games and download additional details like the game's box art, release date, and description. Most SNES games run on Canoe, which is Nintendo's emulator built into the SNES Classic. If a game can't run on Canoe, the software will give you a pop-up asking if you'd like to download a third-party emulator. All this means is that Hakshi will download RetroArch, giving you another emulator that supports a much wider variety of games than Canoe would. Also, RetroArch is how you run games from other consoles. So if this pops up for you when you drag your SNES games into Hakshi, I would just say yes to all. After that, you can see a list of all of your added games on the left hand corner, and since we've only put SNES games in here and the majority of them run with Canoe, you could just click synchronize selected games with Mini and be done with it. However, at the bare minimum, there's a couple more things you should do. First, if a game you imported has box art and you're not a fan of the one that it chose, you can change it by going to the bottom right and letting Hakshi pull up images of the game off Google Images. Or if you want, you can pull up your own images through File Explorer. This is the image that will pop up on the SNES Classics UI, so might as well make it look nice. Don't worry about the rest of the metadata down here. Hakshi collects additional info about your games because Hakshi also works with other mini consoles, including the Sega Genesis Mini, which is able to display a description of the game in its UI. But you can't view info like descriptions and release dates on a SNES Classic, so don't worry about this. If you want to play games from other systems like NES, Genesis, and N64 for example, all you have to do is drag and drop the ROM files into Hakshi, and then we need to download RetroArch. You may have already downloaded it if you received a pop-up earlier asking if you'd like to download a third-party emulator, but if you didn't, just come up here to Modules, and then click on MKFT's Mod Hub. Then click on the RetroArch tab, select the Ozone build, then click Download Module, and only 
definitely click download module because there's going to be a couple more things we need to download. And then when we have them all, we can install everything at the same time. Once you've done that, come on over to the cores tab and download any cores you'll need. Think of cores as the physical game consoles that you want to emulate. So for example, since I'm emulating NES, Genesis, and N64, I'll download the Nestopia, Genesis Extreme GX, and Parallel cores. Once you've chosen your cores based on the consoles you want to emulate, click download module. Now, once you've downloaded all of your cores, leave the mod hub and go to modules and install extra modules. Here, select RetroArch and any cores you've downloaded and click OK. Hakshi will then start installing everything onto this NES Classic. Okay, last thing, and this is important, I would highly recommend you make some type of file structure for all of your games. If you don't, and let's say you've downloaded a large amount of games, since the UI is one long horizontal menu, you'll be endlessly scrolling to find the game you want, the box art at the bottom will be cut off the screen, and you might start getting errors if you fill up the UI with more than 45 games. So all you need to do to create a file structure is click Structure, and then click Custom. From here, you can create your own folders to organize your games. I have everything here sorted by console, and within these folders, I have other folders to sort the games alphabetically. This is split like this just to make sure that all the games can't fit onto the UI, and so it just doesn't take too long to scroll from one end to the other. You can easily use the buttons on the right to let Hakshi sort and create folders for you, and then you can click on the center of the menu here to change the icon for each folder. So for example, you can swap out this generic folder image for an actual image image of any game console. Once you've made a folder structure that you like, click Synchronize Selected Games with Mini. And now Hakshi will install all of your games and preferences to the SNES Classic. And that's pretty much it. I mean, from here, you can just plug in your SNES to the TV and start playing. However, if you're curious about how you can further customize this with custom boot screens, themes, frames, and even a custom options menu to swap between all of your themes, I've included plenty of resources in my description with YouTube tutorials, GitHub links, and subreddit posts in case you're interested. I'm just not including all of that in this video because there's already a bunch of incredible tutorials on those topics, so go ahead and check them out in the description. All right, so let's check it all out. Here we are on the home screen, where I have all of my consoles to choose from and some additional games that I've placed in separate folders. From here, you can just select from any of these consoles, and since they're set up as folders, it'll open up the folder in a new screen. Remember that you can set up this folder structure however you want, but I think sorting them by console and alphabetizing the games inside is the most organized option here. And going into this folder here, you can see all the new games. Since the Classic has such limited storage space, I had to really pick and choose a combination of the most popular games for every console, with some of the more underrated games in the mix. For the most part, a large majority of these games work perfectly. My collection includes a mix of SNES, NES, Genesis, N64, and Game Boy Advance, plus a few other random picks like Floppy Bird, just a certified gamer classic right here. And since I mostly stuck with the smaller, easier to emulate 2D titles, I hardly noticed any visual or audio glitches in nearly anything I played. Every game here looks, sounds, and runs as you would expect. Obviously, you'll receive the best emulation when playing SNES games, since the majority of them can be run through Nintendo's emulator Canoe, which has less input lag and provides all the SNES classic features like frames, filters, and game rewinding. There are a few games that I had to run through RetroArch, and some of them did require additional patches to get them running but afterwards I got almost every SNES game to run. I wasn't able to boot up Uni Racers, and Illusion of Gaia had some strange issue where a black box would cover text in the main menu. Whoa. But these issues were fixed nearly seven years ago with a tool called SFROM, which is a patcher tool you install in Hakshi that pretty much fixes all these issues. So this is just me being a big dumbo. With a little bit of research, you can pretty much find a solution to most of your problems here. The other systems I tried also worked pretty well, for the most part, all of these consoles are running through RetroArch, and they automatically have the control bindings set to the SNES controllers, so they work automatically. You can also go into the RetroArch menu by holding Start and Select, and from there you can change the button mapping if you want. NES works flawlessly of course, though you're probably not playing this for 8-bit gaming, but there is Bible Adventures. Yeah! So don't worry Bible Adventure fans, you can rest easy. Sega Genesis is another great pick. I tried out some classics like Altered Beast, Echo the Dolphin, and Sonic 1, and they all work great without the need for any patches. The SNES Classic provides plenty of blast processing, don't worry. But besides these consoles, I think one of the main appeals to modding a SNES Classic is to play Game Boy Advance games. And not surprisingly, these are a perfect fit. I tested out Kirby, Nightmare, and Dreamland, Metroid Zero Mission, and Pokemon Emerald, and all three of these ran without any flaws. 
I think GPA is a fantastic system to get running on here, especially since you can change filters and create suspend points directly in the Classics UI if you want. The only caveat is the amount of storage space that these games take up. GBA games have much larger file sizes compared to the other systems, so I'd recommend you look into expanding the classic storage if you're serious about doing some GBA gaming. I know on paper these games are only like, what, 8 to 16 megabytes each, but when you consider how little storage there is to work with internally on the SNES Classic, I would definitely look into the USB host mod. You can play N64 on here, but that kind of begs the question, how do you play these games without an analog stick? And my solution is a Wii Classic controller. This controller uses the same connector that's on the SNES Classic, so you can honestly just plug it in and it'll work. You can also look into third-party controllers and buy yourself a wireless adapter that would connect to those controllers, but if you want the easiest plug and play option, if you can find a Classic controller out there, I don't know how much they cost, that's an option. However, once I started playing, I immediately noticed that N64 is, uh, it's not the best. It tries to run at a solid 30, but as you can see, there's definitely some noticeable frame drops and stuttering. I only tried two N64 games because I'm working with very limited storage here. Also, Glover just didn't work for some reason. Glover? What? So for N64, I would look elsewhere, and it seems for 3D games overall, your results will vary drastically. Modders have tried to optimize cores in an attempt to get games running more smoothly though. On Dreamcast, for example, games like Illbly don't deal with stuttering, but they do run at half speed. And frankly, issues like this aren't too shocking considering these mini systems were not developed to compensate for 3D games at all. So if you view this NES Classic as an emulation machine focused on 2D games, you'll really enjoy what this system has to offer. As for customization, there's a lot to tinker with here, but I think the main three things you'll be focused on are themes, frames, and the boot up screens. For frames, as long as the game runs using Canoe, they'll show up in the game. That means that frames only display in SNES games as any other console has to run through RetroArch. So frames may not matter much to people looking to play systems outside of SNES, but it's still worth looking into. You can also change your boot up screen, which is super simple. All you have to do is upload a PNG file to Hakshi, and that's it. There's also a way to add a custom animation boot screen, but there's certain parameters that you have to follow to make sure that it runs correctly. If you're interested in this, I'll provide a link to a tutorial below. Lastly, and probably the coolest addition here, are the themes of course. These are full transformations to the SNES Classics UI that include custom art, music, sound effects, and even unique animations with custom sprites. You've seen some of them throughout this video, from a Link to the Past theme with custom icons, sound effects, and its very own Link sprite running around, to a full-on Wii-inspired UI with the classic Wii ambience in the background. You want a theme based off of Knight Rider? The 1982 sci-fi thriller starting David Hasselhoff only on NBC? See? <laughs> well, I thought you'd never ask. Anyway, these themes are incredible, and a lot of them are really high effort. They add so much more personality to the system, and the modding community has made it so easy to swap between these themes thanks to a custom options menu by CompCom. You can access this through a custom button shortcut, and besides altering other options here like RetroArch settings, you can also swap out themes, and the SNES Classic will reboot with that selected theme. Overall, these themes have so much care put into them, and if you want to browse a collection of some of the more popular ones with tutorials on how to install themes and the custom options menu, once again, links will be below. So as you've seen, the SNES Classic Edition is a really fun system to mod, and I think it's 100% worth it to mod one, especially if you just have yours sitting in the closet somewhere and it's just been rotting for seven years, just, just waiting for someone to game on it. I don't know why that was so descriptive. <laughs> I mean, even if you don't have one, you can find one on eBay right now for around a range of like $60 to $80. It seems that maybe Nintendo actually supplied a decent amount this time, so they're not too hard to come by. It's a fun little weekend project that doesn't take much time to get done, and since this thing has been on the market for more than seven years now, any kind of concern you have when setting up mods for this has probably been addressed on the mini SNES mod subreddit, which is just an incredible source which helped with this entire video. So once again, please go check that out. I know we live in a world now where we have hundreds if not thousands of retro gaming handhelds to choose from that do a much better job at emulating whatever you want to emulate now, but for a low budget game emulator that offers this much customization, charm, and a wide variety of 2D games, I would highly consider picking this up. I don't think you'll regret it. And that's going to be it for this video. If you made it all the way to the end, thank you so much, um, because that's pretty rare. 
uh, we all have goldfish brains nowadays. I don't really expect many people to actually make it this far. So good job, you did it. I don't have a, a prize. While you're here, I will ask, uh -oh. and I will also ask, um, if there are any topics that, <laughs> If there are any topics that you're interested in me covering in the future, give me some suggestions and just let me know in the comments below. Also, if there's anything that you didn't like, anything that could be improved, also let me know. What else? What else? Y'all see that Nintendo Alormo thing? Uh, we all thought Switch 2 was going to drop. It turns out this is Switch 2. Prepare for 20 videos of Alormo coverage. We're going to be like Mr. Beast and have some type of insane video where we like go one month trying every Alormo um, alarm. <laughs> and it's going to have a thumbnail of me like pogging in the corner, uh, pointing at Alormo. It's going to be, it's going to be sick. Oh, my light just died. I think that's my cue to, uh, to stop. Okay, bye.